I don't want anyone to think I'm sliding the other, but I just called Super Bowl 50. It meant the world to me to call the 50 a Super Bowl, but I've been consistent with this. The one event in my career that I would never, ever want to let go of is the Masters. That was the one event that was the impetus for me to want to get into broadcasting, to be a storyteller, to be able to attend these fascinating events all over the world. But it always got back to one place, Augusta National. My voicemail is, hello friends, Jim Nance, CBS Sports. Chris O'Donnell's not here today, he's out at Bel Air making birdies, but in a tradition unlike any other, leave your name and number and he'll call you back. The Masters, it's the best week of the year. Sunday, I've got to be home, no one can be disturbing me, and I've got to be focused on the tournament. And I make my own pimento cheese sandwiches at home as I watch it. The Masters is incredible because that's the biggest of I, all the I never watched it until I played golf, and this guy introduced me to golf. Johnny introduced me to golf, him and Ari took me to Riviera for the first time, and I was like, this isn't a sport. But I kept watching them, and it was all kind of effortless for them. They were hitting these beautiful shots, and I said, let me try that. I couldn't hit the ball. And I said, you know what? I'm going to figure this out. And then I became obsessed. Johnny and I were roommates. You know, we put a cup down the end of the hallway, and we put all day and chip all day okay. in the house on the carpet. Yeah. But uh, I never really watched the Masters until I played the game. And then I was like, wow, I want to play that course. My dad was a golfer. He would bring us and my, send my brother one down fairway and then send me down another fairway. And we would pretty much work as his spotters throughout the course of the round. So we had a great respect for the game. I remember every Masters, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we were glued to that TV. And that's something that uh, I think my father and I had some bonding time. I don't think you can be a golf fan and not watch the Masters and you know, hear, hear Jim Nance, you know, and that iconic voice he is. The tournament that hooked me really was all the way up to the 86 Masters. When Jack Nicholas made that run, yes, you know, I mean, that was, uh, it just made golf on TV really fun for me to watch. I think most people kind of in their late 30s, 40s, 50s, one of their big memories of the Masters is 86. It was a pretty special day, clearly, but I definitely remember 87 because that was Greg Norman. From then on, that was the tournament I had to watch every year because everybody talked about it. And in Australia, it was the Greg Norman's going to win this year. And then it kind of morphed into the Jason Day, Adam Scott, da 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 da. That was how big a deal it was when Adam won the tournament because we've been waiting 25, 30 years. Ever since I was growing up, I watched almost every round, even the par three on TV. My memories are a lot of Tiger Woods' is winning by a million. You know, Phil Mickelson's leap, where he only leaped uh, about an inch off the ground. I'm playing with him this week. Hopefully I can give him a little, little crap about that jump. I actually have a picture of that in my, uh, in my office, signed. Just watching it through the different shots you've seen, Phil hitting it out of the trees on the par five, the Bubba hook on the par four tenth in the playoff. It's one of those events that if you follow golf but you don't play it professionally, you need to go and experience it. You have to go see it at least once. What a pleasure it's been broadcasting it already 30 times. It's all moving along too quickly. I'm on the back nine, or the second nine, I guess you could say. And uh, the second nine at Augusta is pretty good. 